want to see if the, I just want to point to the cleft palate so you can see it. There's a there's an, an ridge that's not normally there, and then the whole the cleft is back in there. So this is the ridge that's usually all together, and then you hey, poor thing. I'm sorry. It's got healthy lungs, and then the cleft is back there. The, the hole. And it goes right up into the nose area. Okay, I'm sorry. You're done. <laughs> so he's done. We're not going to torture him anymore. But that's what a cleft palate looks like. Hi, I'm Sherry, and this is Oliver. And he's a little Pembroke Welsh Corgi. He was born on April 18th. Um, he has a cleft palate. Um, and so it was determined that right after he was born, we checked to make sure that all of the babies have normal palates. And his was a cleft. Um, most of these little guys get undetermined and end up fading and uh, dying because of aspiration and pneumonia. Um, so if you can find them early enough and start tube feeding them, which we will demonstrate later, you can save them if you choose to. I did not know how to tube feed before Oliver, so I've learned from several different people on how to take care of a little guy like him. and. Um, so very thankful to Dr. Martinez who has helped us uh, evaluate his progress and, um, and then where he was born at Pacific Veterinarian uh, Specialist in Capitola and also stayed there in 24-hour um, in care for two days and when he was first born. So and they got him a good start and, and um, helped me with how to take care of him. Um, also, we've had several people, um, including a lady that does special neonatal care for puppies, a vet tech in the Bay Area, um, contact me through Facebook and has been right beside my side the whole way, taking care of, um, showing me how to take care of him. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to have your kit put together. And I have all kinds of extra stuff in here, but your main thing is your syringe um, and um, your formula. So this is the one we use. There's all kinds of different formula. There's there's um, powdered and all that. Um, also, you're going to want a um, tube. This is a number eight French tube, and um, I found this to work the best so far. Um, with the cleft palate, they have a lot of discharge and nasal discharges. So um, I use a um, a little baby aspirating kit here. Um, that has worked better for me other than the bulb syringe. The bulb syringe worked to begin with, but now that he's bigger, this little suction thing works the best to clean out um, his passages before we feed him. Um, you're going to want a little bit of lube, not a lot. Um, when I first learned uh, to do it, they said don't use any lube. That made it very difficult. Um, so um, just a little bit of lube on the tip, as we'll show you later. Um, in your kit, I use a um, magazine with a paper towel folded up in it to keep the tube straight because uh, the tube starts getting more crooked, it's harder to feed down through the esophagus and into the stomach. Um, I use paper towel to lay out things on and so I have paper towel in here. I have my cup to put the warm water in to warm up the milk. Um, and when they're real little, Oliver's already going to the bathroom on his own, but when you first start your puppies, they do not know how to urinate. So you'll use a little bit of warm water on a cotton ball and swab the penis until they urinate into the uh, cotton ball. It's also a good way to see if they're getting dehydrated because the color of the urine can determine the concentration of the urine, which also shows about dehydration. Um, that's one of your big things that you're going to be looking for. Um, also a temperature uh, thermometer so you can take their temperature and um, I think that's pretty much it. I have scissors in here so I can cut my tubes and make them right um, and then also gloves in here also. A couple questions. What temperature is normal for babies? When they're real little and I'm not sure on the age of when it changes but it's between 97 and 99 degrees so it's a real fine line right there. Um, when we had him home for the first 24 hours, his temperature dropped to like 95, and he had aspirated, and um, he was having a lot of um, breathing deep from his diaphragm. Um, so the sooner you get these little guys in when they aspirate, the better chances of getting them through it. Otherwise, if you wait and don't get them in and get the proper care that they need, um, they'll, they'll pass away. 
And then, have you found that it's important to keep puppies warm anyway? I mean, oh yes, we have a whole thing which I didn't bring. We've made him. We call it our little neonatal, neonatal habitat, and it's. Um, and you can probably find it, um, people doing them on the internet too. And we've just made a little plastic box up that I have a heating lamp, and then I also have a um, a heating board. I call it. Um, it's made for pets. Um, that goes underneath some blankets to keep his little place warm and then we put thermometers in there to make sure that the temperature is kept right. Um, all puppies actually need to have stay warm right off the bat but he's had a little harder time with his temperature but he's doing pretty good now. He's um, four and a half weeks and going to the bathroom on his own almost completely potty trained already and um, and so he's doing really good. You have a cup of warm water and um, you want um, their formula to be about 90 degrees. I usually check it like I would for a baby and that is you just put it on your wrist and if it feels just a little bit warmer than your wrist or the same um, or it feels, you, know, you don't want it to feel cool on your, on your wrist is what it is. Um, so we'll warm that up and in the meantime I'll show you how we measure a tube for tube feeding. So this is the way the tube is going to go in and you kind of want to imagine where the esophagus is going to go. And um, so you start with the last rib or just above the last rib right there and go line your thing up as your the tube as you go. Okay. I'll have it. And you'll see I already have a little mark right there, and you're going to want to mark it just past the nose there. That's going to show you where you are in the stomach. So as we put the tube down inside Oliver, um, we'll know how far to go in. There's a lot of fear that goes on with tube feeding, and I was scared, I'll tell you. I had my daughter with me trying to learn how to do it, different eyes, and um, the vets. Uh, taught me how to do it, and I'm like, you're sure? And they said, yeah. And so they they taught me some things to be reassurance of, and also from the internet I've learned, um, um, and then also a book that I picked up about how to know what tube you're going down, and that's your most dangerous thing, and that's what scares a lot of people is that they go into the lungs with the tube, because you can kill a puppy by doing that. Um, and so um, one of the main things is. If you go into the lungs, your tube is only going to go just past the elbow here. It would not go this far. So you'll know if you're going into the lungs and you're not getting up to your mark and it's stiff there, then you know we go ahead and remove it and start over again. That was probably one of my main things that helped me to feel good and, and confident about tube feeding was to just, if it's not going in right the first time, don't worry about it. Just relax, take a breath, remove the tube. Let the puppy rest for a little bit, you rest for a little bit, try again. And that was what really helped me to do that. Um, instead of trying to get it in there and forcing it in and not knowing where I'm at, um, was to have the, the reassurance to know that if it didn't go in, I can pull it back out again and reinsert it. To have fun little receiving blankets because at 2.30 in the morning, when you're getting up, you don't want a little white or brown blanket. This little bright blanket helps me to feel a little bit better in 2.30 in the morning when I'm tubing a little baby. Which he gets, he gets tubed every three hours, 24 seven. So. so you want a lube that's water-based, so don't use Vaseline. Revival Health and AnimalHealth.com, that's it. It has a lot of different supplies um, for you there. Um, so you want to make sure that this is warm like I shared earlier and that it feels either the same temperature or just a little bit warmer than your wrist and that feels pretty good. Insert the tube and one thing that I got confused with, so I'll share this right here, is when I went and picked up these tubes at the vets, this end was huge and so I'm thinking I got the wrong ones and what you do is you cut it down to fit on your syringe. So that's the tip there. And so um, he's actually getting quite a bit of formula now. When he first started, we only started him on four cc's and he's doing 21 now. So um, the way this works is it has a little mouthpiece for you and you're using your own suction. Come on, Ollie. So 
So there wasn't a lot in there today, which is good. Um, you always want it to be over the tongue and they usually curl their tongue like for when they're suctioning for, um, for their mom, when they're nursing on their mom. So you want that to kind of go down because that will be an, a natural way to go down there. Um, if you're having to press hard or advance hard, remove it and try again. So you'll see that Oliver, when he sees it, he opens up and we're gonna put it right over the tongue and advance it down and to one mark. This is a trick I learned. You wanna squeeze their paw. If they're making noise, that means you're in the stomach and not the lungs, because they cannot make noise if you're in the lungs. So that's an all another sure-proof way to know where you're at. That and your mark. And so you go ahead and depress. When you first start, go a little slower at first, and then as they get older, you can go a little faster. If they start like acting like they're gonna throw up, then slow down. Um, you don't want them to throw up because that will make them aspirate. Kind of just go with his natural swallowing too. You kind of get a, a feel for it. And so you'll see that I have my air right there. And so my air is gonna push the rest of the stuff through the tube. Now as you remove the tube, you want to crimp off the air. That way nothing, or you hope nothing comes out through the tube as you're pulling it past the, um, the air passage. So um, the lady at the vet taught me um, at Pacific Vet how to do it. She says, take a deep breath. So we take a deep breath and pull it on out. Just one thing that's been really helpful is to let them nurse on your finger when you're done. And I think for me, I, that's really taught me all kinds of things. For one thing is I can feel his temperatures. Um, so as I'm in his mouth there, I can feel if he feels super warm to me. Um, I can feel the suction if he's strong or weak. Um, and also it's a natural thing, you know, oops, they're created to do that, um, to suckle. So when we're tubing, we are passing that part up. So we wanna try to at least let them have that. I believe that the suckle also create, um, helps them with all kinds of muscle controls and stuff through here. Um, also when, when they uh, suckle, as you'll see here, they'll knead with their feet, which is also moving some muscles. So I try to hold them up nice and just let him suckle. Um, and so you can feel all that stuff. And then the other thing with the cleft palates is the suction cleans some of that stuff out of there. So um, you're hoping that, you know, the suction can get some of the stuff out of the nasal passages. And so I usually let him suckle as long as he wants to. He's not needing. He's probably a little uncomfortable right here. But um, he loves this part of his tube feeding. And um, this is our bonding time. And um, getting, the, like I said, you can feel the temperature. You can feel the strength of the suckle. Um, and you can overall tell how your puppy is doing through this. And it's good for him and natural. Thought you'd enjoy hearing Cherie from Shady Oaks Ranch that uh, sells corgis. If you want to really look on a great website uh, and you're interested in a corgi, she uh, is a breeder that's very conscientious about breeding corgis without genetic defects. And one of the common things uh, corgis have is degenerative myelopathy where they get paralysis in the hind end as they grow. They do genetic ch testing and they're breeding uh, their breeding dogs are clear of it. So that's the background she has. And the reason why I thought that was interesting to, uh, that, to have you watch this is to, to know that and also to know that this, cleft, this little puppy with a cleft palate is not going to breed. She just wants to save it because she's such, got such a good heart. And it may require a lot of surgery done by a specialist uh, to repair that cleft palate. There's a small chance that cleft will grow together and it may not need the surgery and that's what we hope for and she would take it to a specialist for that. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy uh, watching her tube, Oliver, because she's very knowledgeable and uh, really studied up on this and has a really good way she explains how to tube feed her puppy. And I uh, thought maybe if you, any of you out there had puppies you had to tube feed, you might learn how to do it. Uh, this might give you some tips on how to tube feed a puppy. Uh, and it's a hard thing because you have to do it every three to six hours, depending on 
your schedule and what you can do and um, also you got to keep puppies warm and safe and it's a big job so hope you enjoyed it um, if you have a chance go see my website dog dish diet um, I have a PDF that you can download from my publisher's website it's I think it's fourteen dollars teaches you how to crock pot for your dog or cat and also a book called Dog Dish Diet that's got a crock pot recipe in it for dogs. Teaches you a lot about dogs and bad skin and allergies and, and ear problems. And uh, it's really helped a lot of dogs, um, thousands. So anyway, have a great day.